So we'll start with this Zach Wild model uh, Les Paul. But we're not wasting any time here. We'll take that out, put a compensated nut in. We're doing a complete fret dress. And as always, you'll get the play by play. So Jeff uses an 11 to 48 string tuned to E flat. He's pretty excited about this one. Tons of sustain on this guitar. Ebony fingerboard maple neck. Look out. And it comes stock with those EMG pickups. I guess they're the signature Zach Wild pickups, I suppose. You can have a look at that. Got that out ultra clean like we should. So I'm doing these two guitars in tandem, this Larivé guitar that I replaced those first uh, seven frets and then lightly dressed them down to the height of the original frets. So it's basically back to factory spec. So I'm roughing out both of these compensated nuts and doing them in tandem. Just getting ready to cut the values in this compensated nut. And as you can see, I've got my snap shut containers under there. Now, in this case for myself, I've got that uh, self-healing uh, high-density foam that I kind of jam my tools into. So the Zach Wild guitar, this entire job was done on the XLT unit. The actual case, the body platform, the body straps that you get with it, both models we offer a leather upgrade for $37.75 and pretty well everyone's going for that. It's kind of a no-brainer. Uh, and that leather upgrade is the, the leather pad that goes over the foam on the body platform. Well, we are just finishing up this Zach Wild uh, Gibson uh, Signature Les Paul Custom. So this is E-flat tuning with 11 to 48 strings. So the compensated nut for this one be quite a bit different than the compensated nut for this Gretsch Streamliner. The Gretsch is also 11 to 48 strings, but it's tuned to concert pitch. And like I've said to my students, it's a moving target. To do these compensated nuts properly, it's one guitar at a time. So this guitar is a 24 and 9 16 inch scale length, 11 to 48 strings, at concert pitch and these are the values that were cut into that nut to get all six strings to play perfectly in tune. You're wondering this is exactly how I orient the guitar when I'm wiring in the uh, electronics cavity. The Les Paul just kind of tucks between the rails. I cinch it down here. It's dead level and brought right up to chest level so I'm not hunched over to do this wiring. I can stand up straight and get the job done. So there were a couple of things that really kind of caught me by surprise and uh, made me realize that uh, the pickups and the potentiometers on this guitar were kind of a last minute afterthought I think on Gibson's part. This is a windscreen for a microphone they use for the battery which is ingenious but it's not exactly high production. These were the original pots and you can see that 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 shaft is actually pulling out and when I turned them they were cutting out a bit but what really bugged me was all four of these pots were actually turning the reason for that is the CNC holes for these four potentiometers were made for the full-size regular Gibson pot and they had jimmied this up putting a couple extra washers on there to try and tighten it down well it didn't work so I did end up putting four brand new pots in there. They're all rock solid now. 
no more issues with the, the actual potentiometers turning when you adjust the knob. I did put a little slip of insulation over that bare wire because what was happening, and again, this is why it makes me think that you know, to a certain degree, this, this guitar model is kind of a bit of an afterthought, is when you push down on the battery, the ground wire was actually touching the center lug of the pot. So, I'm just going to put that right back together, and we'll go in the house and let you hear this guitar. We've got our Zach Wild silhouette in the back of the headstock. It's interesting how they actually sprayed that in cream. So the side of the headstock, the back of the headstock are painted that cream color and then they sort of bring it to a point here and then it's just maple all the way up. I guess that's what Zach wanted. Yeah, this guitar by the way weighs 11 pounds. <laughs> Here's another opportunity to compare two different compensated nuts. So this one is 11 to 48 strings tuned a half step down to E flat. And this Gibson guitar, same scale length, 10 to 48 strings tuned to concert pitch. Both of these guitars now play flawlessly, perfectly in tune. Even though this is tuned down to E flat, well, I've made the adjustments in the bridge and the nut to accommodate that E flat tuning, 11 to 48. So both of these guys can kiss any tuning problems goodbye forever. And here's a moment of truth with the Zach Wild guitar. We'll go through a few chords. Here's I know that Jeff isn't too likely to do a bluegrass tune on this guitar, but just to make a point, anyone out there that's got a Les Paul, pick up your guitar and try and play these three chords. G, C, D. You gotta remember this guitar is intonated for E flat tuning, so it's not concert pitch, but it's relative pitch. So so all the chords and all the positions, let's just go through a typical D chord, which is in reality in this case D flat, but we'll, we'll play it in several positions and again pick up your own Les Paul and try this. So there's your first position D chord. And uh, that F sharp on the first string is always out of tune. You've got to actually tune that string down for it to be right. Not now, it's perfect. Okay, so a G chord. Of course, G flat actually, but. an A, A major 7, C, no. so that is where we ended up with for the compensated nut on this guitar. This is 11 to 48 strings regulated for E-flat tuning.